Hello, all of you very gloriously wonderful people, and welcome back to City Skylines, where, uh, once again, we're going to be dealing with industries. Uh, specifically, um, well, of course, they're all solving themselves as, as I bring it up, but all these guys that were saying not enough resources, and you can see it's happening in a lot of places, not enough buyers for products, and then we have some that are complaining about not enough raw resources every once in a while. And I have put in a lot of time since I last recorded um, for this particular series, uh, specifically in live streams, just trying to figure out wh how do you do industries? How do you make industries really work really well? Um, and there's a couple things that are required. First of all, I'm going to get rid of pretty much everything and we're going to start over. So I'm going to do that real quick, only keeping the main industry buildings, and then we'll be right back. All right, so with that done, uh, you probably noticed I also dezoned everything that was actually just an industrial zone, even though they're inside of a specialized farming industry. We're going to fix that because what you may have noticed is we have these imports that are happening, and that's where those imports are coming from. It's not the, it wasn't the uh, industry DLC buildings, these guys that was importing. It was these guys that were importing. Um, and we'll talk about all of that uh, in a minute, if I remember. But the main thing on industries that I've overlooked has been uh, proper distribution. And, and I finally got this all put together. Um, this kind of shows you your supply chain. So for in an example, farming, you have your extractor buildings, which are uh, your fields. You take that and turn it into crops, which can be exported, but crops can also be sent to processor buildings, which result in flour and animal products. Those animal products go into unique factories, which get turned into um, unique factory goods or luxury goods that can then be sold in the commercial zones in your city. And if there isn't a need for those, they will be exported. Now, each of these buildings, your unique factories and your processors, all need resources. Uh, and they pull those resources from storage. Now, will a crop field deliver to, say, a <clears throat> flour mill? It can. However, if your small crop field reaches its maximum storage, if this fills all the way up, 25 tons, and there is no processing building that needs that resource, it's just going to export it. And now you notice there's only five trucks in use here. If this fills up, all five of those trucks are now gonna send that out to be exported, probably over here to the cargo train terminal, or worse, as a truck that leaves the map and has to make a massive long trek, um, it may send it to uh, commercial throughout the city if they're requiring it, but those are all going to take that truck far away, meaning that truck is going to get tied up uh, and be unavailable for delivering anything else. We know that we want to be able to supply the bakery. So the bakery, and this is all information that is readily available. It well, maybe not for this, these guys. I'm not sure if it tells you or not what these use. Um, the bakery tells you its production rate. I don't think it tells you how much it uses of each resource, but that information is available online. We know that the bakery, as I look here in my little spreadsheet, uses uh, four tons of crops, 
3.2 tons of animal products and 4.8 tons of flour. So if we want to support just the bakery, then we need to be producing all of that. 4 tons of crops, 3.2 tons of animal products, and 4.8 tons of flour. And that needs to be left over when we're done with everything else. So for crops, we're actually going to need a little bit more because those crops uh, are what gets used to actually supply the flour mill and the animal products as well. These guys um, in here. So your processing buildings. They take the, these the large animal pastures takes crops, feeds it to the animals and then turns that into animal products. The same is true uh, for the flour mill. And even though there's a cattle shed, milking parlor and slaughterhouse you would think oh well those are going to take animal products and turn them into something else no they still take in crops and produce animal products so that is what they need and to make this all work you need storage and you need it to be nearby um these individual storage units that for each industry have to be placed in the industry area Warehouses do not. However, warehouses can't store crops. It's the one weird one that can't be stored uh, in a warehouse. I think it's pretty much all your raw resources can't be stored in a warehouse. So, with all of this knowledge, I now have a better idea of how to plan my city. So, using a spreadsheet, and I think I'll throw this up on the screen. If I have the need for one bakery, you can see down here those numbers. I need four tons of crops, 3.2 tons of animal products, and 4.8 tons of flour. Uh, but I'm not making any of that right now, so I need to do that. Um, and in order to do that, we need to go up to our crop fields and figure out how we're going to get that done. But first we should probably address where we're going to get all of our flour from and all of that. Well, the flour mill is our only choice for our flour. One of them will produce four tons and use 2.4 tons of crops, but one's not enough. We need at least two. So that's going to give us 3.2 tons of flour. So we'll have a little leftover. And then for animal products, um, you know, you could do just a, a variation of things. You could do like one uh, small animal pasture, a cattle shed, um, and like a slaughterhouse. That's going to give us way more than we need, but at least we have a little bit of variety. So all of that we need to make total to supply the bakery and all of our processing buildings 21.6 uh, tons of crops. Now, your larger and medium ones cost more per ton, but they also produce more and they have more trucks available. So it's really up to you. Do you want to maximize profits? If so, go with your small extractor buildings, or do you just want to get things done and have a lot of delivery trucks available and all that? If so, use your bigger ones. I tend to just go with the medium ones just because they work fine. Uh, so we can do like two medium crop fields, two medium fruit fields, and that is enough to supply everything. So that's what we're gonna put in. We are going to go in with two medium crop fields and we're gonna put them fairly centrally located here, uh, kind of down towards uh, the end of a road to where it's gonna be a right-hand turn coming out. And that's important and we'll talk about why in just a minute. Um, so a right-hand turn coming out there. So when they leave, they will turn right and go this way down the road. And then another one, um, down here again, uh, right hand turn. I want to go up here. Let's go up here just for symmetry's sake. So there, that gets that done. Now those crops need somewhere to go. The best thing to do is to have storage very nearby. That way, when the crops are produced, they will be delivered right there into that storage. Now notice, this guy only has eight trucks available. Those eight trucks will only have to go from here to there. And then they'll loop around and come right back. Instead of having to go way all over the map to do the deliveries, how I had it all set up earlier. That's important to have this guy really close. So now let's say that uh, we want to produce 
our uh, flour. So we go in here to our processing buildings and we go to the flour mill, which is somewhere. Now, you want to put it, again, fairly close. It doesn't have to be right next to it, but you want it to be close. Whoops, I put that one the wrong way. You want it to be close because now you're more likely to get deliveries from this barn to this flower mill. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Unfortunately, you can't say you guys are a self-contained unit. Don't ever pull from anywhere else. Sometimes this barn will deliver to this flower mill, but having it like this optimizes your chance for success. So we've got that done. I know I want a small animal pasture, so we will put that in. Um, actually, we'll, let's put it in our other crops, figure out where we're going to put those. Uh, so medium fruit fields, I so said we're going to do two of those. So we'll throw those in, uh, like down here and down here. Get our storage for all of that. And I just go with the bigger guys. You don't have to. You can go with the smaller ones. I mean, this thing is only going to produce... Um, I forget how many units it produces each. They each produce eight tons, um, and the barn can hold uh, 50 or 500 tons. So, you know, obviously plenty of space there. Let's make that one not a greenhouse, and let's make that one not a greenhouse, because I just like it that way. Um, so now we want to get in our cattle shed and our slaughterhouse. So... There's our slaughterhouse. It's a big boy, so actually we'll move all of that stuff up to here, probably. Yeah, let's move all that up here if it'll fit. You're not fitting that. There you will. Uh, so let's move this these guys up here. Um, and you can just hit the move button, pay a small fee, and they're up there. So there, that gets that one done. And then I also want to have um, a cattle shed. So we find the cattle shed, which is that one right there. And that all fits nicely down there. So now we've got the basics in. But where are the animal products going to go when they're done? And where's the flour going to go when they're done? Well, that's where your regular warehouses come into play. I know this is a lot. Bear with me. So we're going to be producing um, from our small animal pasture 2.4 tons of crops. So these guys, this one holds 100 tons. So that would be enough to have nearby, but just in case it goes a little bit bigger, you could go with these guys, but your small warehouses, they're fine. So again, you want these just nearby uh, where everything is gonna be produced. This one's a little bit more tricky. So let's say if he turns right out of there, he can make a right into here um, and come down this way. A little bit of a longer journey, but it'll work. So. Each one of these now has a place to go. So you have to indicate what goes here. This is flour. This one, uh, no, this one is also flour. And I just realized I've got that on the wrong side. Or do I? Yeah, this is all set up backwards. Let's fix that. Because those aren't going to be right-hand turns. I like right-hand turns. That way they don't have to turn across traffic. Um... It, it just seems to help your traffic out a lot. So, where's my barn that I just moved? Am I blind? There it is. I am blind. It's just right there next to that. So, grab that. Grab the flour mill. And then grab the warehouse yard. So, there, boom. Right hand turn, right hand turn, right hand turn, right hand turn. And they can go around and come back. So, your flour, uh, you are a cattle shed, so you need to be animal products. And you can just leave them unbalanced. Um, these guys, it says they won't import, but it really seems like they do. Um, so I don't know how true that is. And then this is animal products. And believe it or not, that's it. That is all I need for this farm area to work. And to supply that bakery with everything that it needs. Now, if I were, if we look back at the spreadsheet... If I were wanting to have uh, more of the different industry buildings, you know, that also use crops like the lemonade factory, the clothing factory, paper factory, sneaker factory, I would need to increase my crops, my animal products, and flour accordingly. And that's the beauty of this spreadsheet is if you just tell it, hey, I would like to also have uh, the lemonade factory, you 
put in the quantity of one and that now adjusts what you're using and then over on the right um you have an idea of what it is you need i'm doing this on my laptop but i'll record it on my desktop and my laptop's garbage so it takes me a while to uh, scroll over so we can even support the lemonade factory with what we're doing right now um it would be breaking even in a few places but we'd still be over in our production overall by adding the lemonade factory we this would still be enough um so then what does all this other space get used for and the question or the answer to that question is whatever you want it um uh, you know since this is fertile land this is where that other issue comes in where you were importing some things actually let's uh move some stuff real quick bear with me a minute okay so i moved things to where they all occupy just these four squares uh the main building is over here and the bakery is back here mainly because all of these guys can come out right come up and deliver to the bakery and it will be these buildings that are doing it are warehouses so this one will have a longest trip but they will be supplying things to the bakery and the barns will be as well um now to get improved storage if you if you find yourself running out of storage and you don't want to build any more buildings uh you can put in the uh maintenance buildings uh which are uh these guys right here they increase uh the storage capacity of every building by five percent so every single building including your storage from what i understand gets increased or maybe it's just these guys that get increased i'm not sure it may just be these guys that get increased you don't really need them um they're just not really all that necessary and then of course your workers barracks help bring in workers these don't generate trucks so their placement isn't all that important so you can just throw in a few of these uh to if you find that your worker numbers aren't available but there so our farming industry that was not working it would have never supplied these industries efficiently and they would have been sit there just using money over and over again that in it all occupied all of this now only occupies right there that's the furniture factory we'll deal with that uh, so what I can do now is come in here with my industrial zone and I can bring it all the way down to just this area right here. Got to go out there to this edge because that's where my main building is. But it will all work just fine as a much, much smaller area. So I can do that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Now, the other part that we talked about. Because I've made that so small, there's really no room for me to put industrial buildings in here, like the zoned industrial buildings. But we still have this fertile land and we could do some industry out here. We don't have a huge industrial demand, but we could do it in theory. Um, so what I would wanna do is make sure that this area here is excluded from this specialized industrial zone everything in the farm area so the two aren't working with each other they don't really anyway so now this hillside heights if i zone something as industry it will still make agricultural products um, it just won't need to rely on anything from my actual farm and more importantly these guys in order to produce their products these zoned industries they wind up needing things as well in the supply chain it's just not really well displayed they need sometimes uh, oil products paper products things like that and they'll import those and that's where those import fees come from that you're paying for so anything you're importing it was coming from these guys so now if I unpause, immediately these guys are going to, for a while, say, hey, I don't have enough products. But once all of our crops and everything get running, that's going to go away. Of course, the bakery is going to experience the same problem as well. But once we actually start producing some crops here, we are going to get this up and running. Let's change these from greenhouses because I don't like greenhouses. And it does not matter what crop style you choose. So we're going to let this run a minute, and then I'm going to come back with you and show you the change here. So what I've done briefly is just turn off my processor buildings just to let us get a little bit of storage into these barns. And what we should see here is that 
trucks leave the fields and go to the barn, usually right next door. There, that guy, so he came out and boom, right into that barn. And then he'll go down, figure out a way back and come back. I don't know what, how he's going to do it, but he will. Um, and that's what you should see is them just delivering to the barn next door. Sometimes, like I said, they will go farther away. It's kind of silly that they do it, but they do. So this is about 30% full. So if I turn this on, what we should see is the trucks from the barn, which is already a bunch of them in years, but they should pretty quickly just start delivering to the guy next door, which apparently they already did. Didn't see it happen, but whatever. So we're probably safe in turning all of these back on now because this barn, 25% full, roughly. So we can turn him on. Uh, he already has some supplies from earlier, so he's good to go. Uh, this guy is 27% full, so we can turn him on. He must have just got it delivered before I turned him off, so he's ready to go. And then uh, he has crops as well, so we can turn him back on. So now all we have to do is wait on our animal products to start filling up uh, and our flour as well. So that's what we're going to wait on here and get those a little bit fuller. So we'll come back when that happens. Okay, so most of our warehouse yards are starting to fill up. 32% there, 32% there, 16% there, and 24% there. So we can turn the bakery back on. He will immediately call for animal products. So one of these animal products guys will come fill him up and get him up and running pretty quickly. There we go. We got that delivery. And because it's all nice and close together it all works fine so now the question is what if you don't have a whole lot of space and you need to put some of your manufacturing like maybe way over here well that's fine you can do that you could you know if we wanted to do the lemonade factory which we haven't unlocked yet i don't think no we have if i wanted to put this guy out way over here that's okay what i would want to do though is make sure that the resources he uses which are crops and glass which we don't have glass then I had a warehouse, um, preferably at least a small warehouse. I tend to go with medium though, just to be sure that they have enough and get that thing to where it's got about 20 to 25% full before you build the lemonade factory and it will get up and running quite easily. And of course the same thing can work with the timber industry. Um, and this solves a lot of problems. One, look how fewer vehicles are now on the road for my farming industry that previously spanned all of this and was causing massive traffic problems all over here. Now it's all just right here and no big traffic problems. So the spreadsheet that I was looking at, it was not my idea. I originally found it um, on Reddit. Someone posted just a PNG, just a picture of their own spreadsheet that they were using. And that's great, that's awesome. Um, but it didn't really help me just have a picture of a spreadsheet that's not functional to enter the numbers in and everything. Um, a lot of people had requested it. Apparently, they tried to upload it via Dropbox. Reddit said no, blah, 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 blah. And so I just figured it out myself. I went to the city's wiki, got everything that's on the building values tab, and then that's where the spreadsheet I created in Google Sheets pulls all the information from. And I actually use it when I'm playing City Skylines now to make sure that my industries are going to be running. And you notice that nobody is complaining about not having buyers for products because this guy now has a buyer for his products. It's this barn. It's gonna go there until it's full. And then if I do wind up producing way too much crops that the barn gets full and this gets full and they don't have anywhere to go because all their trucks are in use, one, that's probably not going to happen because this guy's always going to be calling for it. But if it did happen, that's fine. I build another barn. Or if it's the animal products, I can build another warehouse yard. And if it sits there full for too long, they'll just go export it. They'll just send it out to export either to one of these guys. Oh, we're having a death wave and a half out there, aren't we? Um, <laughs> I just noticed that. Let's... Uh get that so it's not empty anymore so I can go pick up some of those dead people I think there's another cemetery somewhere I'm not sure where it is though um maybe that's the only one wow that is one hell of a death wave but anyways uh, yeah you can just set up more warehouses and then that other warehouse will go do exports and you'll wind up making some money so 
all in. We are still importing a little bit of stuff. I don't know really why this area is importing. We might have just a little bit of overlap um, in our industries. Looks like we might actually have just a little bit of overlap in our industry area. And yeah, so if we come in here and trim that down to just where our actual industry is that should get rid of the imports it has in other cities that i've done yeah like see so these guys if they're imported anything they would have cost money i moved the main building so i can get rid of that section as well so then hopefully those imports will go away pretty quick because uh, they should have no need to import anything now this area is totally self-sufficient uh, the only thing that needs anything is the bakery, and it has everything it needs right here. So eventually that import should go away, and we'll start actually making a profit here. Uh, this guy is now making us $3,840. You can crank it up to 150%, but keep in mind that it's now going to use more of each product, and I don't have the numbers on that, I would assume you bump all your numbers to 150 percent if you bump all your factories to that but i haven't tested that yet so the final final the final piece of this equation are these pastries the specialty goods what do you do with those well there's a place for those as well um you can just do any size warehouse you really want i'd like to use this one if it'll fit right here it will and you go in here and you set this to unique factory products they will now just ship their stuff right there and then this warehouse and its 20 trucks will be responsible for exporting all the bakery goods either out to the city to commercial that needs it or to our cargo hub or just by truck on highway um since i've got the cargo hub they'll usually go there but we'll see this thing start filling up but it doesn't stay very full um, unless you don't have a way to export, like you have only like one outside connection and no cargo terminals, um, and you don't have a whole lot of commerce in town that's needing it, these don't really stay full. But you want to do that. You want to have the factory or the warehouse. Because again, our factory only has 10 trucks. If all 10 of those get involved in exporting and they're on really long trips, and then this fills up, you're going to get that not enough buyers for products problem again, and you won't be making money. So by having it being able to go here, you're telling these guys you don't ever have to worry about it. They will only ever deliver right next door. Just like that little red truck did. And then he'll just drive around the block and he'll go right back in. You can see him right there. There he goes, and right back home. That's his longest trip. But now there goes a delivery truck from there. They're going to take care of doing everything else. For some reason, Neptune Media needs some bakery products. Don't know why. But so, yeah, that's it. That's industries. And it finally makes sense for me. If something I said didn't make sense, if I didn't explain it clear enough, leave a comment down below and talk to me about it. By the way, you notice our industry need changed? You can actually get these guys if you balance them out properly to truly fulfill your industry need. It will work because this takes into account not only the need for jobs, but also commercials need for industry. And that's what's happening right now is because I got rid of all this stuff over here and all this over here. Commercial is not getting enough good supply. So I need to take care of all that, but I will, we'll address it, but that'll be in another video. And until then, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.